now that we've gotten used to solving systems of equations by graphing, we're ready to deal with some situations where the answers turn out to be a little trickier uh, than maybe we had in the first couple of uh, worksheets from this particular unit. So here's the I can statement from 6.2. I can approximate solutions to system, uh, systems of equations by graphing. And you'll remember that instead of using the word approximate, sometimes we use this word. Sometimes we said estimate. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to write that down, but we could also say estimate solutions of systems of equations by graphing. Now, when I was doing this the last couple of days, I, I graphed them and I just kind of used my, my marker on here to just kind of mark it. And I wasn't terribly concerned about making a perfectly straight line because I knew most of them were going to work out well. Well, starting today, you're going to want to make sure that you use a very sharp pencil and you're going to want to have a straight edge, an edge of a paper, a binder, a folder. You could even grab a, a ruler in class or something like that. You want to have something that will have you make really straight lines. So I am going to be using my line making tool today. So here's the first one that we're going to do in the warm-up. It says get a sharp pencil and solve the system by graphing. So we're going to solve this system by graphing and it's already set up to graph. It's already in slope intercept form. So this one crosses at 4 and I'm going to make this uh, a little bit bigger so that we can see what's going on here. So this one crosses at 4 and the slope is negative 1. So this would be down 1 and over 1. So I've got this perfect 45 headed down like this. Okay, So we're going right down like that and then going up this other way. Um, it's going to look something like this. Now if I'm going to draw this really nice and straight, I'm going to grab this line making tool and I'm going to start right there and I'm going to go as straight as I possibly can. To me that looks pretty well perfect. It goes through all of those points that I graphed um, and it's a nice fine sharp line. I'm now going to do the blue one. This one crosses at negative 2 so we're down 2 and then the slope is positive 1 so rise 1, run 1, rise 1, run 1. This might look familiar to some of you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put some dots down here kind of follow that 45 degree angle going down there. I'm going to grab this line making tool. So we're going to go about right there and make it go through all of those. That looks pretty good. I'm going to adjust this just a little bit. And with that adjusted, I think that looks really good. And if we were to even zoom in here just a little bit more, it's pretty easy to see, especially since as we were doing that stair step pattern, that this point right here is what we're interested in. That right there is the solution. So we're going to be over 3 in the x direction, up 1 in the y direction. So the point that makes both of those true is this right here. It's the point 3 comma 1. So we'll put a circle around that. We've done our work by showing the graph, and then all we have to do is write down the answer here. Now, um, these are going to be good practice for what we're going to be doing today because we're going to be doing some estimating. So there's no, there's no perfect answer to this, um, but it does want three different answers. So if you get something different than I do or that your neighbor does, then that's totally okay. It says give uh, three numbers between 2 and 2.56. Okay, so one way that you can help this out would be maybe thinking of this as 2.00 and then 2.56. So $2 and $2 and 50, 56 cents. So let's say 2.1 or 2.10. Um, 2.3 would work. Um, how about something like this? How about 2.5? Whoops, 2.55. Okay, any one of those would be fine as long as we're in between 2.00 and 2.56, then that's totally fine. Okay, a um, bunch of different answers would work there. And then it says give three numbers that are between negative 4 and negative 5, and make sure that 1 is closer to negative 4 than it is to negative 5. Now, it might be helpful to stop and think about where these are, and this is why we draw the number line uh, when we were graphing um, inequalities and stuff like that. Um, negative 4 and negative 5 are over on this side. So if you want something in between negative 4 and negative 5, you've got to get something that's going to be in between there. Okay? So right in between negative 4 and negative uh, 5 would be negative 4.5. That would be between there. Um, negative 4. Point, let's do 4.72. Okay? That'd be like, you know, a little bit closer to uh, negative 5. And one that's closer to negative 4. Well, if you wanted to be really closer, close to negative 4, maybe something like this, negative 4.01. Okay? That would be totally fine, or 4.1 or 4.2. As long as it's closer to negative 4 than it is to negative 5, that's what it asked for right there. Um, and if we looked at these, this one is smack dab in the middle, 
and this one's quite a bit closer to negative 5 than it is to negative 4. Okay, now that might seem like a strange thing to do, but there are some people that have trouble with that. And if you do, uh, make sure you work on it. Uh, it's a really good thing because we're going we're gonna to be estimating our answers today. So doing these little throwing out some numbers and taking a good guess at what would be in between some other numbers is going to be really helpful. Okay, so all the systems we've solved so far have nice answers. In other words, they cross at convenient. We're going to call them convenient. Convenient, convenient, convenient coordinates, and by that we mean they cross at integers. Okay, so in parentheses, I'm just going to write they cross at integers. So remember, integers are positive and negative whole numbers, including zero. Okay, we didn't have to. <clears throat> We didn't have to wonder, oh gosh, I wonder where they cross. I mean, usually we put a dot on uh, using our stair step pattern for slope with one line, and then it happened that the other ones matched up also. Okay, now we really don't have to change much about um, the equations to make it so the answers are not very nice. This particular one here has a really nice answer. Okay, notice that we've got the black one is y equals negative x plus 4, same one here. This blue one is y equals x minus 2, and now the blue one has changed to y equals x minus 1. So it's almost exactly the same. So I'm going to quickly go through here, and I'm going to graph the black one. So remember, the black one crossed at crossed at 4, and then its slope was negative 1. So I'm just going to draw that line again really quickly here. So it's going to look like this. It's going to cross, and I'm going to have to adjust this. And now I've got that, that black line adjusted so it's perfect. Okay, and you'll notice that I did this uh, coordinate axis a lot bigger than the other one, and you'll see why in just a second. So we're going to take the blue one. This one crosses at negative 1, so it crosses right here. And then we're going to rise one and run one because the uh, slope is 1. So up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one. And you'll notice that we just skipped right over that line so that we end up with these are going to cross at a little bit of a weird point. So I'm going to grab my line tool in the blue and I'll graph those. So you'll see that I've got both of these lines graphed, the black one and the blue one. So the black one is a picture of all the points that work in the black equation. The blue one is a picture of all the points that work in the blue equation. And come here and take a look. I'm going to zoom in on this just a little bit, and we have a problem. Now, unlike before where they crossed at a nice convenient point, they happened to cross at uh, 3 comma 1 before, now they cross in between here. They cross somewhere in between, and I'm going to change this to red, somewhere between 2 and 3, and somewhere between 1 and 2. So somewhere between 2 and 3 in the x direction, somewhere between 1 and 2 in the y direction. So what we do here is, remember that the name of the section is we're approximating, we're estimating. So all we have to do is come close. So this point right here, now if you do a really good graph, now I picked this one for a reason, it's a good one to start out with, this kind of looks like it crosses right in the middle. So here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say that the x coordinate is about 2.5, and the y coordinate is about 1.5. Now I'm going to zoom back out so that we can look at the whole thing. And it said approximate to the tenths place. So we, we just want to come close. As long as we put a tenth answer, totally fine. That's going to work. Now, we don't want anybody looking at this and saying, well, I don't think that's the answer. I think it's maybe 2.6 or this is 1.1 or something like that. So we want to tell everybody, hey, I'm just approximating. I'm just getting close. I'm estimating the answer. So if you think there is a symbol that we use to show when we're approximating an answer, and it is a squiggly equal sign. That looks horrible. Okay, so squiggly equal sign. So we're just going to put this and we're going to circle that. Now, anybody looking at this would know, hey, we graphed these the right way. Everybody could see that. And then we're saying, you know what? We don't know exactly what it is, but we're just estimating. OK, so here's the cool thing on today's assignment. All you're going to need to do is get close. Put a tense answer on there. Have it be reasonable. Um, like I said, on this one right here, this is why we practice this. If you put a number in between uh, negative uh, 5 and negative 4, and you said it was negative 5.1, that's what we're talking about. You've got to know how to estimate in between those uh, particular values that you come up with. So here's a different graph. It's got some grid lines on here. It's got the halves marked um, a little bit lighter. So I'm going to go through here and we're going to graph the black one. This one uh, crosses at 0, so it crosses right here. And then the slope is 4 thirds, so we're going to rise 4. Okay, Make sure you're counting um, one entire unit. So we're going to rise 1, 2, 3, 4, and then over 1, 2, 3. So we're going to go right here. 
and then we're going to go down four and back three so we're going to be about right here so that line is going to look something like this this is just going to show up here okay that's about as good as I can get it uh, that worked out really well um, so we've got this nice straight line slope of four-thirds again a little bit steeper than a slope of one this next one the blue one's going to cross at negative five so that's going to be about right here and then the slope on that one is negative three halves so we would go down three so we can't even go down three full box or three units let's go down three boxes and then over two so that would be about right there okay we're gonna put that in the ballpark and we're gonna go up three and back two so that's gonna be right here up three and back two up three and back two so it's gonna look something like that okay so it looks like we've got things lining up there pretty well so this is what that graphs gonna look like so I've got the blue line on there that looks pretty darn good crosses right there looks like it goes through all of those again nice sharp uh, lines here as if you were graphing those with uh, you know a, a straight edge or something like that so I'm gonna zoom in on this one and let's, let's figure out what the answer is now you'll notice it does not cross at a nice point in fact this is in between negative 2 and negative 1 so I'm gonna go ahead and put that negative 2 and negative 1 and right here it's in between negative 2 and negative 3 so the X values are somewhere in between here and you'll notice that this would be negative 1.5 and this line right here that uh, kind of gray line right there that's negative 2.5 so it doesn't even cross at a half value so we want to put down and I'm gonna put those little approximation symbols right here we want to put down an approximate X value so I think this is going to be closer to negative 2 than it is to negative 1. Now, we could argue about whether or not you think that's negative 1.75 or negative 1.6 or negative 1.9 or something like that. All we need to do is give a tense answer and be reasonably close. Um, I think it's probably around negative 1.7 okay now if you want to put down negative 1.8 totally okay that that would be just fine with me in fact if you had a you know a big fat piece of uh, lead that was going through here and it even looked like it was 1.5 or 1.6 I'm totally okay with that as long as you're getting close to the answer and you're making your graphs as accurate as you can so in the y direction it's going to be between negative uh, 2 and negative 3 I think it's closer to 2, negative 2, than it is to negative 3. So let's say maybe negative 2.3. So negative 2.3. So I'm going to zoom back out and let's take a look at this. Does this look reasonable that it would be about negative 1.7, about right there, and then negative 2.3? looks pretty good and again all you're doing is you're showing your work in graphing that and then you're giving an estimate to the tenths place okay let's take a look at the next page and let's run through and do another one again we're gonna estimate this to the tenths place you'll notice that on this one we've got to solve this um, so that we've got this in slope intercept form so I'm gonna move this around and again we've done this enough I'm not gonna take much time to explain what's going on here I'm just going to zip through and go ahead and come up with the equations that we're going to need to graph. So we've got a y equals, this would be 3 halves x and then plus 1. So that's one of them that we're going to graph, put a dotted circle around that. And then I'm going to move the x to the other side. So this is going to be 2y equals negative x plus 12 and we're going to divide everything by 2 here so we get y equals this would be negative 1 half x and then plus 6 so that's what we're going to graph okay so let's come over here and take a look the black one crosses at 1 and has a slope of 3 halves so rise 3 run 2 rise 3 run 2 down 3 back 2 down 3 back 2 now you'll notice that we have no idea where that other one is going to cross so we want to make sure that we're graphing that entire thing on here so down 3 and back 2 so we've got this line right here and again we want to do as straight as we possibly can gosh this is probably one of the straightest ones I've done by hand except for that jagged bit at the end there let's do the blue one this one crosses at six so six is right here and the slope is negative one half so we're gonna do go down one right two down one right two okay again we don't have to be perfect with the rest of this because we know what shape this is gonna be it's gonna be a line that slopes down and we've got an idea you know it's hey, it's not crossing way down here it's crossing right there so I'm gonna put a red dot right there and let's figure out what we're going to use for coordinates so I'm going to put that approximately equal symbol here 
this is in between 2 and 3. So you go ahead and get in your head what you think it is, you know, how far in between there is. I'm going to say it's about 2.4 because I think it's not quite halfway. Again, not perfect, but close enough. And then over here, it's in between 4 and 5. So let's take a look there. I think it's a lot closer to 5 than it is to 4. So I'm going to give a number that's really close to 5. So I'm going to say 4.8. Okay. Now, we're just estimating. If we plug this in, it probably would not make either one of them perfectly true, but it should get them both very close. Okay. So I'm going to slide down here and we're going to take a look at the last one. And you should be able to tell based on that blue equation, one of these is going to be really easy to graph. So let's take a look. All I need to do here is add the x. 3y x plus 9. Divide every term on both sides. Be fair to every single one of those terms. And we get this. So I'm going to be graphing that one. And then we're going to be graphing this one. So let's subtract 4. So we get x equals negative 4. So I'm going to put a dotted line around that one. Let's graph this one first because it's pretty easy. This tells us which axis it crosses. It crosses the x-axis at negative 4. So we're right here. Um, it only crosses the x-axis. The only condition is that x needs to be negative 4. So we can go as far up in the y direction as we want and as far down in the y direction as we want. So there we go. Apologize that for that little, little wiggle there. And then the black one looks like this. It crosses at 3. And the slope is 1 third. So that would be rise 1 and run 3. Not very steep in the positive direction. So it's going to look like this. And again, once we get to there, if you kind of want to just, once we get a point on each side of that line where we know we're going to intersect, um, then we can go ahead and draw our line. I don't need to get too carried away. And I'm going to put a point right there. Now, one of these we know for sure. Okay, We know for a fact that this is back 4. Um, so that's going to be negative 4. We know what the x value is going to be because that's the only one that makes that. Uh, true that we're not we don't have to estimate that one at all this one the y value we do need to estimate it's between 1 and 2 I think it's a little bit closer to 2 than it is to 1 so I'm gonna say 1.6 if you wanted to say 1.7 totally okay with me the idea is that you're using your head and you're estimating very very valuable skill okay uh, good luck on the assignment